This is a special edition of Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shan, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shan. And we go to Washington, D.C. with Randy Thompson and I talking to United States Senator John Ensign on this suspicious day. Last night, uh, the President of the United States nominated Judge John G. Roberts, a veteran of 39 arguments before the Supreme Court, to replace Sandra, Sandra Day O'Connor uh, on the Supreme Court. Senator, uh, what do you know about this judge? Well, uh, I know a, a lot of basically what you know. Uh, he went through a confirmation process a little over two years ago uh, for the second highest court in the land, for the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, he was approved on unanimous consent uh, by the Senate. Uh, he was passed out of the Judiciary Committee on a 16-3 to 3 vote. Uh, he's, got, he's eminently qualified based on not only his arguments uh, in front of the Supreme Court, his educational background, uh, now his experience on the, uh, in the Circuit Court of Appeals. And I think that uh, based on what the president talked about and, and, and uh, what I've heard about him, uh, he's the kind of judge that will not legislate from the bench. He's the kind of judge that will interpret the Constitution in a strict manner uh, according to the laws of the land. And I think that's the kind of judge that we need on the bench. Senator, there's already been some name calling about Mr. Roberts, and it seems sad that you know all those people that are supposed to be learning what they learned in kindergarten have forgotten it. Um, the the uh, MoveOn.org calling him a right wing wacko. How do you how do you defend a guy that's being tried in the media like this right now? And can you just get them to cool the tempers and, and let the let the process go on? Well, I, I think a lot of the organizations that are out there uh, bad-mouthing uh, John Roberts before they know that much about him are, are uh, their own worst enemy. I think that they're making our case for us. Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, was an extreme uh, you know, liberal. She was uh, the head of the ACLU, and, and uh, if you read some of her writings, uh, it's, it's in, obviously not something that I agree with, but yet she was eminently qualified to be on the Supreme Court. And President Clinton put her forward with those qualifications, even though that a lot of people didn't agree with, with her. President Clinton won the election, and part of winning elections is getting the kinds of philosophy and judges that you want on the courts. And uh, President Bush has now put forward somebody, somebody who has similar philosophies that he has. This person is eminently qualified, and this person deserves to be confirmed. Um, were you pleased that uh, John McCain this morning was coming out in favor of this nomination? Oh, I expect, uh, you know, unless some extraordinary comes out about his background, I expect that every Republican will support. Uh Okay, and we lost the satellite window there. We were doing our best to get as much time as we could. <laughs> we'll be right back with more on Nevada Newsmakers uh, with Governor Bob List right after this. Nevada Newsmakers, brought to you in part by the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk and the Peppermill family of casinos. High-tech companies demand perfect world amenities. They require clean, reliable power, state-of-the-art fiber optic communications, and clean water sources. In a perfect world, companies would have immediate access to rail and interstate freeways. There would be four-lane expressways that shorten shipping times and provide convenient commute routes for valued employees. Well, the future is now, and it's here. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevada. When making your decision as where to play golf, consider the resort at Red Hawk. You know you have made the right choice the moment you arrive. The friendly staff welcomes you to our award-winning pro shop. You know you've made the right decision on the first tee. The Lakes course is in the best condition in years. You know you've made the right choice after you've played 18 holes. The Resort at Red Hawk. The right choice. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shack a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shack And we welcome to the program the former governor of the great state of Nevada, Robert List, who now represents the Nuclear Energy Institute. Before we get to that, I want to show a picture of a very beautiful young lady, your daughter, 10-year-old Elizabeth. She's absolutely gorgeous. And before we got the serious stuff, I just wanted to do that. So wave, will you? 
<laughs> All right, now we get to the serious stuff here. Okay, so you, you are representing the Nuclear Energy Institute, and you are promoting Yucca Mountain as, as a repository for nuclear waste. Uh, despite what we've seen here with the government saying that, uh, or not the government, but, but the scientists saying that there is no sound science for this, wh why do you continue to promote this? Well, I believe that it's, it's, it's frankly a done deal. In, in the word of uh, in the words of parlance, the uh, the place is is now represents almost ten billion dollars having been spent. There's a national policy adopted by the Congress, approved by the president. After all these years of study, uh, I think it's going to happen. Nuclear uh, energy in this country amounts to twenty percent of the total energy that we use in America, and it's clean, uh, it's safe. And it's proven, it's grown all over the world. There are plants being built everywhere. We also have waste from our military, from our submarine uh, uh, reactors, and it has to go someplace. And frankly, Nevada's the place, whether we like it or not. Well, okay, Brian Sandoval, the Attorney General, would say it's not a done deal. Governor Grimm would say it's not a done deal. The entire congressional delegation, including the Senate Minority Leader, would mm -hmm. say it's not a done deal. They feel they've got this thing killed in the courts. That's what they say, but the reality is that of the 13 uh, charges made by the state against the process, they got a partial victory on one. That's all they've had. And that, that one had to do with the uh, water uh, standard, the quality standard. EPA is rewriting that standard, and by this fall, that'll be history and that'll be done. The only other flaw that anybody has been able to, to come up with through a microscope, practically, is this issue of the emails, which uh, went back and forth. And what's happened is DOE is going to go back and replicate that work and do it over again. So, you know, frankly, this project is going to happen. And it's it can be a very good thing for Nevada. It's a $60 billion project, bigger than Hoover Dam and the Panama Canal combined. And so the, the money being spent in Nevada can give a whole new wave of science and research uh, having to do with energy of all types. And we ought to take advantage of it, Sam. That's my belief. Governor, uh when you, when you were governor and you left office in 1983, you sealed your gubernatorial papers uh, for 25 years. That 25 years is going to be up in 2007. I'm really curious what are in those papers because when you were governor was the time when Nevada was pushing the mob out of uh, uh, the casinos in Las Vegas. So could you give us a little taste of what's in those papers? Well, the Nevada statutes do provide that, that all governor's uh, official documents are sealed for 25 years and so mine have been sealed. I will tell you that uh, that what's in those papers is, is something that I'm very proud of, which is that we essentially ran the mob out of Las Vegas and uh, we revoked the licenses as you may recall of I think seven or eight major resort hotels uh, we had to actually force one of them down to close down in order to force the people uh, the mob to give it up uh, the, the papers will show that we carried on a huge fight and there's a lot of correspondence about that I, Sounds I would like, like to a have you, you know what I, yeah, I would love be. to have you back on the program to talk more in detail about that but I got to get back to Yucca Mountain because we're not done with this yet the nuclear energy industry has carried more than 3,000 shipments of used nuclear fuel over 1.7 million miles of U.S. highways and railroads since 1964. Trucks loaded uh, with, uh, loaded with uh, fuel containers were involved in four accidents. The most serious was an overturned truck in 1971, yet no radiation was released in any of the accidents right. or at any other time. While this is a good track record, how comfortable are you with the transportation of the spent fuel? Because that, that's what scares me the most. And many I, others. And, yeah, I think it does. And, and the it, bombings in London don't make me feel any more secure. Well. The containers that will be used for this material will withstand uh, a fire like the fire in the tunnel that took place in Maryland a few years ago. They'll withstand uh, an, an aircraft diving down or into them. They'll withstand uh, virtually every kind of impact in heat or condition or water. And uh, the reality is that they have transported over 3,000 miles very safely. The reality is that in Reno today, you can drive down uh, Interstate 80 or go over on the railroad tracks. There are 
huge shipments of chlorine and all kinds of very dangerous substances that have literally uh, infinitesimal protection compared to what nuclear waste has. And so I, I'm very comfortable that they've solved it. Well, Transported kind of, all over the world. It's but taken that's kind a, of like saying two wrongs, you know, don't make a right here. I mean, just because chlorine gas is not being protected the way it should be, and I agree with you, uh, but, you know, a, a bomb attached to a cask, couldn't that cause serious problems? I don't believe it could. I believe that there'll, there'll be security, there'll be protection, uh, and the reality is you have to give up a little bit of something every time you make uh, an advancement in this world. I mean, should we continue to, to, uh, to rely on other nations in a, as, as a country uh, where uh, our energy independence has become so important to all of us? We're at war in the Middle East over energy issues, largely or to some extent, and have been. Um, here's an opportunity to help advance our energy independence. All right, you save, know this, was supposed to be a one this was supposed to be a one-segment interview. I'm turning it into a two-segment interview. We're going to take a break. We'll come back more with the governor right after this. And I For a videotaped copy of any Nevada Newsmakers program, call 775-857-2244. The tapes are $20 each, including shipping. My family started this business 27 years ago. We work hard to serve our customers and our community. But it's getting harder and harder to keep the doors open. For example, our workers' comp is going through the roof. Isn't anyone on my side anymore? The Retail Association of Nevada is. If you're a small business owner, we can cut your workers' comp by up to 50%, lobby for your interests, and keep you informed. Put us to work today. The materials we rely on every day come from the ground, and modern mining technology brings them to us cleaner and safer than ever before. To learn more about America's natural resources, visit nma.org, the National Mining Association. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. Back on Nevada Newsmakers with former Governor Robert List, who represents the Nuclear Energy Institute, who are in favor of uh, the uh, nuclear waste site at Yucca Mountain. The NRC says that, uh, that pool storage of nuclear waste is safe. Why can't we leave the waste where it is? Because th this is the problem I have. By having Yucca Mountain, yes, you can move all this waste from all these nuclear sites all across the country to Yucca Mountain over a period of years. But it's not like you're stopping making it. It's just a continuous process. Is Nevada going to ever be the dumping ground? Why aren't we looking at reprocessing uh, nuclear waste? Chick Heck talked about this years ago. We should be. We should be looking at reprocessing it. And frankly, I think there's an opportunity to do that in Nevada. I believe that when this material goes in the ground and it has a huge amount of energy potential and power left in it, some say as much as 80% of the total net power that, that the nuclear uh, fuel can generate is still within it. If it's brought back out and reprocessed, that could be an enormous industry in Nevada. It's being done elsewhere in the world. Shipments, by the way, are going all over the world by ship, by train, by truck. All of it's safely handled. In every part of the world, new plants are being built, except in this country, and they're about to be expanded here as well. So I think that's a great opportunity for us. I think it's like creating gold in the Carlin trend. The mountain is going to have enormous Man, value. Man, you're a good spinmeister. You really are. Ne Nevada ought to get a royalty on it when it comes back out. It could be a huge enhancement for our, our budgets, local and statewide. Governor, if you were still the governor of the state and had this attitude, do you think you could be reelected? I think so. There's an interesting uh, fact that comes out of the polling on this. Most people don't want it. You ask people, probably 65 to 70 percent of the people of Nevada, if, if given the choice, would say, I don't want it here. And then you say to them, do you think it's coming? And 75 to 80 percent of them say yes. 
And then you ask them, should we begin negotiating for benefits? And almost 90% say yes. So I think it's time we turned the corner, took a constructive approach to it, and stepped up to the table and began to get some side benefits and opportunities out of it. Okay, and the counter argument to that is that once you say, let's negotiate, you're saying you're going to take it. You're saying that there is a price to pay. No, it's still subject to the licensing of the NRC. True. Nevada but, but, takes a so seat. You're a good table. negotiator. You you know that once somebody says, "Okay, let's let's talk about," I, I'm not going to say I'm going to take it, but at least let's you're talk about it. it. You're taking it. So what it's, are the opportunities? It's not a question of how much money. Well. It, it still has not been finally approved. The licensing has to be done by the NRC. Uh, the hearings will start uh, probably next year in Las Vegas. The state will have a seat at the table, can object, can cross-examine, can present evidence. And there's nothing wrong with saying, in the event a license is issued, what should we get out of this? It doesn't mean rolling over and playing dead. We have a, The state certainly has an opportunity to make sure the project is done right, to help monitor it, to help design the transportation system. Uh, and like they do in New Mexico with a WIP project, to actually have a scientific presence at every stage of the uh, uh, of the placement and the, the management of it. Go Make sure it's done right for the environment and the safety of the people. Governor, you mentioned the WIP project in New Mexico. According to testimony before the Nevada legislature, New Mexico also tried to negotiate with the federal government on that, and they ended up negotiating, and what they ended up negotiating for never came through because different people, as you know, the, the federal government is kind of liquid. People People that move in, move out, and they never got what they bargained for. I, I don't know who gave that testimony, but I can tell you that they have gotten hundreds of millions of dollars worth of benefits. I have a, in fact, I have a, a written list that shows everything they were promised and everything they got, and they actually got more than they were promised. Would you send, would you make that available to us? Uh, absolutely. Love to see that. Yes. One, one last thing, and we've got about a minute and a half left. Th there is a, a, a positive side to this story. For example, Nye County has received significant monies uh, based upon mm -hmm. this project. I think somewhere in the order at this point of about eighty million dollars yes. that they've got in trust funds. What are the other kinds? Of, and and they would like to see this project because they want to see yes. that railroad come into Central Nevada because mm -hmm. it would give them a chance for increase yeah. in business. And our university system, a little known fact, has received over a hundred million dollars in grants. Uh, DRI, for example, is participating in the hydrological studies at, at the site. So uh, the the state really has a lot of participation. Has gotten a lot of benefits. Uh, other counties have gotten money. The local counties have gotten over well over I think 150 to 200 million dollars uh, to help study and analyze and and uh, participate to the extent that they protect their people and protect their environment and that's as it should be well we thank you so much for being here today I've never stopped the show in the middle and said we're going to extend a guest but we're going to bump the other person we had on today and put him on at a later date uh, but uh -huh. thank you so much for being here I would love to have you come back and talk more about the mafia stuff okay I'd love to do it okay former thank governor so Robert List we'll be right back on Nevada news Makers after this. This is Nevada Newsmakers. For more than a decade, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has been helping the community embrace conservation as a way of life. That includes replacing more than 50 million square feet of grass with water smart landscaping. During the worst drought on record, watering restrictions and tough landscaping codes have reduced the community's water use by billions of gallons, even as thousands of new residents were moving into Nevada. That's smart water management, and that's our promise to Nevada. When making your decision as where to play golf, consider the resort at Red Hawk. You know you have made the right choice the moment you arrive. The friendly staff welcomes you to our award-winning pro shop. You know you've made the right decision on the first tee. The Lakes course is in the best condition in years. You know you've made the right choice after you've played 18 holes. The Resort at Red Hawk. The right choice. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. And we welcome to the program and our Power Pundit panel today, Ty Cobb, former Special Assistant to President Reagan, Scott Bensing, Chief of Staff to Senator John Ensign, and Larry Mathias, Executive Director of the Nevada State Medical Association. Welcome to all of you. Now, Scott, you've been on me for so long about that I quote from the New York Times, and, and I'm not quoting from the Wall Street Journal, so in your honor today, I just want you to know that I, I did purchase the Wall Street Journal because I wanted to get the Wall Street Journal's take on John Roberts 
uh, who has been nominated for the Supreme Court. Unfortunately, unlike the New York Times, they went to bed before they knew who the nominee was. So... <laughs> Thanks for the advice. It's a good experiment, <laughs> though. The, the, the fact that you're now reading the journal, I'm sure, will be seen in ratings in the. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. But I, I do want to. I do want to thank you for pushing me in that direction. Okay, let's get serious and talk, talk about this nomination. Uh, pretty much a complete surprise to just about everybody, right, Scott? I don't know that it was a complete surprise. There were some rumors earlier in the day that it was uh, uh, Judge Clement from the Fifth Circuit. Um, which were obviously proved uh, not to be, but uh, Judge Roberts has always been on the on the short list of a dozen or so nominees uh, because of his qualifications. So uh, I don't know if it was a surprise, but I think uh, universally everybody acknowledges that if there's anybody who's ever been qualified to be in the Supreme Court based on their uh, background and integrity, it's John Roberts. You know, Ty, um, I, I've said on this program before that Senator McCain uh, seems to have taken over the leadership of the Senate with uh, the Gang of 14, and this morning uh, he was quite plainly saying that he was in support of this nominee and uh, and didn't see it as being a problem for confirmation. Oh, Would you agree look, with that? Sam, uh, Judge Roberts is going to sail through with... Uh enormous backing. He'll have all the Republicans supporting him and most of the Democrats. He, he's on good terms with Democrats and uh, Republicans in Washington. He's highly respected, as Scott said. He f flew through Harvard Law School and Harvard undergrad in uh, three years. He has an excellent record on the uh, court. Uh, there's not going to be any problems. Certainly, uh, Ted Kennedy is going to demand that we know what John Roberts is going to do about affirmative action and choice and school prayer. But I think this confirmation will only serve to further marginalize Kennedy and, and uh, highlight uh, Judge Roberts' qualifications. Uh, you know, Larry, it was interesting. Even the New York Times this morning took no position on this and just said, like Senator Reid did, that we, you know, we wanted to talk to him and find out what his thoughts are and, it, and go from a, there. It's a brilliant political coup. Right. Uh, right. The, this, is the, this is the seat that changes this court into mm -hmm. the court that validates the Republican revolution of the last decade. And um, the president is going to get one or two additional uh, Supreme Court choices in the next in the next year or so, um, and and I think that that will simply further uh, strengthen it. It's a, it's a move on which um, only those that uh, mostly those the interest groups that have put together these huge war chests to fight whoever is a, uh, nominated uh, are going to are going to use this more for getting some moments on, on, the, on the TV and, mm -hmm. of course, p fundraising. Yeah, but uh, but I, I, think yeah. it's, I, think, uh, I think I agree with, uh, with Ty that, that it, it's going to be a fairly, in the end, a fairly decided, a decisive vote. But it is a, it is a land, uh, uh, really a, uh, an earthquake in terms of changing the philosophy of the federal judiciary. And that will have consequences for well, I, you know, a generation. I, I would agree with Larry. Politically, I think it was a wise move because the president may not be in the strongest position now what with the Karl Rove um, problems in, this, in the that's situation the, in Iraq. Page. Now, if he would have yeah. chosen a Janice Brown or somebody, it would have been a very difficult fight, even Gonzalez. But picking John Roberts, and who uh, is equally conservative and probably will be an influ influential voice in the court for a number of years. As Larry said, this this completely changes the makeup. Okay, so how does she compare, oh, how does he rather compare with Sandra Day O'Connor, for example? Yeah. They're both conservative, but he is, cons he, he is I think, a, a, uh, a much more philosophically oriented, ideologically oriented conservative than she was. I think she was a more pragmatic conservative that would, I mean, she did. She, f she was uh, often the deciding vote on very complex questions. She was more comfortable on issues dealing with, with business and, and individual freedom and things like that um, and was, was hard to put, except that I think she believed in, the, in once the Supreme Court made a decision that she wasn't going to be on the side of changing those fundamental decisions. I'm not sure that that's going to be the case here, where there's a fundamental disagreement that the court at some point made a decision with which uh, this judge would disagree. I think he would join those other justices who have shown that they would like to set new precedents. One of the key issues that keeps coming up is this legislating from the bench. And, you know, President Bush said it, even Senator Ensign today said that this is a judge, this is a judge, man that won't legislate from the bench. Is this a partisan issue, in your opinion, Scott, or are there really concerns on both sides of the aisle of legislation coming from the bench? I can't imagine it should be a partisan issue. I think that's what uh, the Constitution set up uh, and expected from our judiciary in an uh, e e equal but separate 
uh, base of power that they not be uh, usurping uh, the powers that Congress has. We've, there are a number of examples um, uh, that we can point to that should be a uh, it should cause us all some concern. Mm -hmm. uh, whether right or wrong, Congress or the legislature or whatever legislative body it is ought to be making those decisions. And whether we like them or not, uh, at least we have a direct say in how that happens. Uh, for judges that are appointed for a lifetime, we don't, we're not uh, appointing them because they have a certain political philosophy. We're appointing them, in, is my hope, that we will appoint them because they have a mm -hmm. certain judicial philosophy, mm -hmm. and that is to abide by precedent, the Constitution, the law, and the intent of Congress in making the law. But these were some of the oldest fights in the Republic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, the, the administrations tore apart old friendships. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson uh, broke on exactly this, this issue. Mm -hmm. And the Constitution didn't envision quite the separation and quite the, uh, the, the status mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of the court. That was really invented by John Marshall who was Jefferson's cousin because he despised Jefferson and this was an easy way to get back at him and so he creates judicial review which was not in the Constitution I mean that was uh, that was the first invention of law by by the courts so I think there's a long history of this in, to one degree or another um, all ju all judges are politicians in, in robes and they're and they're part of the main I think right now that main has moved in a direction that's being confirmed by uh, by Roberts going on the court. Okay, last quick question. Um, the first thing that came over my email after the first news alerts were uh, a, a fundraising letter from Planned Parenthood. Um, on both the right and the left, we are going to see this used as a massive way, right, Scott, of, of fundraising? They've been mobilizing, they, but both on the right and the left have been mobilizing for some time. Um, all the fights we've had over, in my estimation, the fights we've have had over appellate court judges have all been about gearing up. It was all batting practice for Supreme Court vacancy. And that's where we got to leave it. We'll be right back on Nevada Newsmakers after this. Thanks, guys. Nevada Newsmakers, brought to you in part by the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. Here at the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, water resources come from fresh, clean groundwater approved by state permits. The water is pumped from wells to million gallon storage tanks and then distributed to TRI companies. Another amenity is our investment in a state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant. This disposal system converts waste to clean water for industrial applications. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world building economic prosperity for Nevada. South Reno's hotspot for food, fun, and friends is the Tamarack Junction. Enjoy great food 24 hours a day in the dining car restaurant. For a quick bite and the best sandwiches in town, it's the Whistle Stop Deli. And for the best appetizers and menu selections, and a large variety of cocktails, beers, and martinis, it's Sully's Sports Bar, Grill, and Nightclub. The Tamarack Junction is your junction for fun. South Virginia and the Body Ranch Parkway. My family started this business 27 years ago. We work hard to serve our customers and our community. But it's getting harder and harder to keep the doors open. For example, our workers' comp is going through the roof. Isn't anyone on my side anymore? The Retail Association of Nevada is. If you're a small business owner, we can cut your workers' comp by up to 50%, lobby for your interests, and keep you informed. Put us to work today. Ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. Don't forget, you can now watch Nevada Newsmakers online at nevadanewsmakers.com. Coming up tomorrow, we have Barry Polson, a professor of economics from the University of Colorado, to talk about the Taxpayers' Bill of Rights. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. -bye.